Jake and I were talking yesterday. He asked me if I remembered my bar mitzvah. I think he was suggesting something about my age. (laughs) And I remarked to him that I believe that there are four days in a person's life that they always remember. No matter what happens in our lives, there are usually four categories of days that we always remember. If we're blessed to be able to experience them, the first is, of course, your bar bat mitzvah. The second may be uh, when you get married. The third may be when you have children. And the fourth, unfortunately, will be the day you lose a loved one. Those categories of Life cycle are moments in which we will always remember. Those great liminal moments in which we celebrate extraordinary accomplishment and achievement, rite of passage and birth of life. And the seemingly insurmountable pain of losing a loved one. And we know, Nathan did beautifully today, in the company of family and friends, but we also know there are grandfathers that aren't here today. Thank God you have your grandmas, but there are grandfathers who aren't here and we miss them. And we feel that gap. And there are so many people who experience great accomplishments And they're overjoyed by being able to accomplish those achievements. But there is some gap when there are people who you love who aren't there. Whether it's because they couldn't make the trip or because they're no longer with us. Graduations in which we celebrate Achievements of higher learning sometimes have a gap because a loved one isn't there to celebrate alongside. And so it's not difficult to recognize why amidst the census, I am sorry. You see? Tradition says, Devarim shiotzimina lev nechnasim la lev, words that come from the heart enter the heart. So it's not impossible to understand why, amidst this census, the counting of the Jewish people, that we have this extraordinary sentence that says, Vayamat nadavi aviu lifne Adonai bikravam esh zara lifne Adonai. That amidst the census, Amidst the counting of the Jewish people, there is one sentence that stands out. It says, and Nadav and Avihu died in a tragic accident in the temple. And he left only two sons for Aaron. Left. Elazarni Tamar. Now, Dav and Aviu are gone. And there remained Elazar and Tamar. It's the way of the Torah telling us that while there are those who are missing, there are those who are present. We can choose in our lives to focus on the gaps, the missing pieces, the people who are gone. Or, says the Torah, we can fully embrace those people who are still by our side. We can choose to focus on what's missing, or we can choose to focus on what we have. But I also think there's something more that's going on. As the Ramban points out, Yachzor al Arachok, it's important to review what's happened. It's important to recognize there are people who are missing, they're no longer with us to review what's happened. And to recognize that this loss isn't just a loss for one individual. So many people had a loss when Nadav and Aviyu died. Aaron lost a son. Aaron's 
wife, Nadav and Avihu's mother, lost a son. Elazar, Itamar, they lost brothers. It's not just about an individual who loses someone. It's about how many people lost that person. Yachzor al arachok, it's important to review over those memories that may be distant. They may be far in the past. Because without reviewing that, you don't have an opportunity to move on. Says the Torah, when you do a count of how many people you have, you also have to remember how many people you've lost. You can't have a Memorial Day barbecue without remembering the people who are no longer with us. It says this morning's parsha, you can count all the people you want, but you'll always remember someone who's missing. And that is an important exercise to do because without doing that exercise of recognizing who's missing, you'll be trapped in the loss and never move on. This week's parsha Bamidbar, translated in English, is in the wilderness. If you never recognize the loss that you have in your life, you push it away, you'll forever wander around. I've witnessed it so many times in my life. Individuals who are suffering terrible loss, tragedy sometimes, but natural others, will spend so much of the time immediately after the loss busying themselves, running from activity to activity, from one place to another, doing so many things so they don't have to think about the loss. And then one day they've exhausted themselves. And it may be a year later, it may be two years later, it may be even longer. And then they break down and they cry. Because for the first time, they're recognizing the loss. And for the first time in their life, there is the moment that they have the chance to continue on. The Jewish people right now are amidst the desert experience. They're wandering the wilderness. They're looking for the promised land. It hasn't come into focus yet. They're busy fighting a lot of battles. This week's parsha. The census is also about the military framework, about protecting the center, making sure they come together to fight the battles. It's also recognizing the losses. How many people didn't make it out of Egypt? How many people aren't going to make it to the promised land? There are losses that we each feel in our lives. And until we give ourselves the moment to recognize that, we'll be trapped in that loss. It's important to say those names of the people who are no longer with us. To say Nadav and Avihu, to recognize that this tragedy occurred and that the Jewish people are less because of it. It's important for us to name those moments in our lives of loss or we'll be forever trapped in the wilderness of wandering. This morning's parsha, amidst all the great achievements, the military and the economic, the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who survived, it's important to stop for just a moment and say it. Recognize that it's a loss, and that's okay. It's part of being alive. Whether they're tragic or natural, Loss is part of being alive. And you have to say it. Even if it's just one sentence in a long parsha, you have to say it. But once you say it, give yourself permission then to move on. As today, we recognize the people who aren't here, but then we move on to celebrate the extraordinary achievement of a young man who's come of age here in front of this community. It's important for us to celebrate, to move on, to say that the journey continues forward, that life continues. If we're going to live a true, full experience of what it means to be alive, then we have to recognize the loss, we have to name it, and then we have to move on. The parsha doesn't stay focused on this death. The parsha says it and then moves on. 
And so too do you have to do in your lives. You have to say, I miss mom. I miss dad. I miss my brother. I miss my sister. I wish they could have been at this moment. I would have loved them to see what you were able to accomplish. But then you have to move on. You have to put Nathan up on a chair and dance and say, we celebrate this great achievement in your life and we're not going to allow it to be brought down by the loss we felt in the past. We have to be able to say it, name it, and then move on. The parsha can't be focused only on the loss. It has to be about moving forward in our lives. We have to be able to say it, name it, and then move on. The experience of the Jewish people is to suggest that we are a people that is continuously surviving. There are those historians who say we're the ever dying people, but we're not. We're the ever living people because we always say, we have to choose life. This week's parsha says we experience loss. Everyone experiences loss, but we have to say we're going to move on. We have to say that no matter the tragedy, no matter the loss, there's still life ahead. There's still opportunity for celebration. There's still moments of achievement. And so I offer you this one little piece of advice. I think that they're actually here. I think those people who are no longer physically present remain a part of our lives as long as we remember them. And so we bring them into the experience. They may be gone physically, but they're with us. They inform our decisions. They answer our questions. They're watching. And so we invite them to celebrate with us. Shabbat Shalom. We continue with Musaf, page 184.